If you're looking to impress your clients, we know that carousels are the way to go. But in order to do so, you need to make them interactive. In this video, I will show you how to build this all new carousel from material design. We're gonna use Figma components, variants, and properties. If you wanna follow along this video, the Figma file is in the description below. Now, let's dive right into it. To save some time, I already have some items ready here in Figma. I have the frame that where I will be putting my final carousel component. Then I have these songs item that we're gonna make a component later. I didn't make it a component yet because I wanted to show you how to use the text properties. And then I have the color palette that I will be using throughout these designs. So for the first step, let's make the image component that we're gonna use in, in our carousel. So for that, I'll press F and I want the size to be 270 and 300. And for border radius, I will use 26 pixels. Then to add some color, I can add a placeholder image in the meantime, and for that I will use Unsplash for abstract, and let's use this one. Then we can make a component, we click here, and I will change these to image. To make the carousel effect, I need three variants for this component. So I'll add a variant and then add another one. Let's change this property name to state. And this one will be the active state because it's the one that is being focused by your carousel. This one is the one that is next to your main image. So let's call it semi because it's semi active. And this one is the one that is hidden, that is not being visible on your screen. So let's call this default. So for the second variant, I want this to be way smaller. So let's change this to 57. And for the one that is not being visible, this one is the one that gives the carousel the kind of like the parallax and fade in effect. So for the parallax, I want the, the width to be like almost half of the width of my active image. So let's make it 150. And for the fade in effect, I will use the path through property and I will make this 20 pixels. So now let's make the song component. As you probably imagine, this will have two variants, one active and one default. And you already know how to make components now, so I will just select these two and make a component set. So the main thing I wanted to show you is the text property, and we're gonna use it for the song name and the artist name. So let's select this song name, come here in content, and add a text property. I will change this to song, and let's make the default value to be blinding lights, create property, and then I'll select this, come here again, and instead of using the song property, I will create a new property, and I will call this artist, and let's leave the weekend to meet the default value. And then for the second state, we're just gonna assign this to, to the properties. This will be song, and this will be artist. And we can also change the names of this. Let's change this to state. And this will be active and default. That's it. So now let's use our brand new songs component to create a, a new songs list component. So to create an instance, I will press option and drag this here. Then I will create a copy of this one, pressing option and dragging here. I will select these two, make an auto layout, pressing shift A, and then I'll add three more copies. I will select these four items and I will make it default. We only need one to be active. And then I will add 10 pixels of padding on top. I will change the fill to white and I will use a border radius of 26 to match my image. And then to solve this ugly overflow, we can use clip content. Now we can make this a component. I will change this to songs list and make it a component. And now we need five variants for this component because we're gonna change the order of these songs. But before that, let's use our text property and change the name of the songs and the artist. I'll get some random songs from Spotify right now. Now that we have the five different songs, I need to make the five or the four other variants. 
And now all we need to do is to change the order of these songs and make them active. Then sorry for this one, this will be active and this will be default. Then I can change my, the name of this property. I'll call it song and I'll change it to one, two, three, four, and five. And now that we have all the different states, I will change the images. I will make this in 4x because I will just select the images of, let's say, blinding lights. I will select blinding lights and all these five steps and change the image all at once using Unsplash. So that's it. Once you add the names and change the images, this component is ready. Now to make our main carousel component, we're going to put all of these components together. And first I will grab an instance of my image component. Then we'll create a copy. I will put these two under an auto layout, press shift A. Then I'll create three more copies. I'll change the gap to 16 pixels. Then I only need the main, the first one to be the, the active. These I want to be semi, and then the rest are going to be default. I will not change the images yet. I will do it at the end and I highly recommend you to do the same. Otherwise you will have a bug when you change from one variant to the other. Now I can create my main container and this will be holding my carousel or my image carousel and my songs list. So this one should be 375 because we're uh, we're building for mobile and this is 680. And I want the background to be this light gray. Now I can put this here and I will not make this an auto layout because I need to move these around for um, for my different variants. And for that, I need it to be a frame, not an auto layout. So well, this would be 16 and this one 16. Nice. And I can also move this here and grab an instant of my list and put it here. I want the distance to be 16 too. And now I will change the name to carousel and make this a component. And now to, to know if all the dimensions are correct, I can also move this or one instant of this inside my main container already. Um, yeah, everything looks good. I can even see the prototype. Of course, it will not have any animations yet, but all the dimensions seems to be correct. Actually, while redoing this process for the tutorial, I found a bug with the dragging animation if we have the, the list on the component before doing the animation. So let's keep it out for the moment and let's add it at the end. So now we need to create the, the variants. I'll create three more copies. I want to see the rest of my images, so I will check this clip content feature. And I need to do the same for each of my variants. I can also change the property name to use the song again. And this will be one, two, three, four, and five. And now that I have all my variants, I can change my images. And I want my images to match the, the ones I use for my, for my performance here. So I'll go to Unsplash again and look for the same images. Once I have all the images, I need to start moving these around. So for the second variant, this will be semi and my second image will be active. Then for the third one, this one will be default. This one will be semi and this one will be active. And I need to move these to the left. Then for this one, again, this is default. This is also go to default. This one is now semi and this one is active. And again, 
I need to move it to the right. And I will do the same process for the other two variants. If you have any issues while moving around this carousel, like for example, the carousel going out of the, your, of your container, stuff like that, I recommend you to move and press space and that, and that way you always keep your carousel inside. And you can also use, use your keyboard. And if you want to move it faster using your keyboard, you need to press shift and any arrow and that will move it a little bit faster. Once we have the images in the right position, we can start animating this. And for the dragging animation, make sure to select the outer layout that is containing your image, not your main container. So select the outer layout, go to prototype, and connect it with your next variant. Change this to drag, smart animate, and then we're going to leave this at ease out 300 milliseconds. And we're going to do the same for all of this. And now let's do the same for the other way. Connect this to this one. Drag. And now we can check if the prototype is working. Of course, we don't have our, our song list anymore here in our prototype because it's a component. And great, our carousel seems to be working perfectly. Now let's finish this, adding the song list. Now I can drag an instance of my of my list. I'll put it here. And before copying these to the, the other variants, I will add the animations so I don't need to redo it for every single variant. That will save you some time. So I'll go to prototype. And for this one, the animation is it's quite simple. I just need to connect with this corresponding image. And I will use tab and a smart animate. And now that I have the, uh, the animation, I can copy these to the other variants. And of course, I need to change these to risk corresponding variants. For this one will be two. This one will be three. This one will be four. And this one will be five. And finally, I just need to check if all the animations are working. And now, if everything is correct, this is kind of a mess. So probably if you find a bug on the, on the animation, it will be in this last step. So I can check my animations. I can try scrolling. Everything seems to be working. I can also try clicking the, the image and see if it corresponds to the right one. And as simple as that, you have a fully interactive carousel that you can use to delight your next clients. And if you want to learn more about Figma product design in general, follow me and see you on my next tutorial.